Good afternoon and welcome to episode number 617. This one's going to be an interesting topic and the topic actually today is the evolution of society and relationship doesn't match up and it actually was hinted at yesterday and we talking it yesterday that it was dropping in but I wasn't ready to talk about it and I've been brewing and sitting on it for the last 24 hours but anyway I'm jumping ahead before I do this let me before I talk about that let me just do this which introduce myself so you know what's going on here in this talk. My name is, is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what inspired these talks starting just after the election last uh, 2016, which is called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And in doing this work, I've become sort of somewhat aware of some things that are going on. Oh, by the way, this is a Facebook Live first. There will be on YouTube later on, so if you're watching it on YouTube, this is a replay. And if you're watching it on Facebook after I did it, it's also a replay. But you can comment on either one, and I can respond after I sign off, and I'll give you the links about that at the back end. So let's jump in. So today's topic is, as I said, well, by the way, this is episode number 617. Say that again. And the topic today is, it's, it's actually... I want to say it's a theory, but it's something I've been sitting with for a while and just really started hitting me yesterday that I need to talk about this, which is, in simple terms, is that relationship society are evolving at different rates. That's kind of what I'm talking about here. And I'm going to talk about this from the point of view of how the culture that we live in has been blind to some of the developments that are happening in our world, particularly with women becoming more, in, um, more evolved, more aware, and more comparable to men and how men have, in some cases, caught up, in some cases, been left behind. And this disparity that's going on in culture and relationship are happening at different rates, which is kind of disheartening and challenging at the same time. So hopefully this, this will make some sense, and, I'm, and, I'm, and this is very much in the moment in my head. It's not something I've got clarity on and saying, this is the answer, this is the solution. It might show up, um, but I want to put this out on the table because I'm really becoming aware of this I want to say discord, this this imbalance, put it that way. Let me give you a little history lesson first. Because um, this is what I was talking about yesterday that led into this. If you um, are of a certain age, <laughs> or at least if you watch it on replay and, and on maybe, I don't know if it's on Netflix or where it is right now, it might be on Nickelodeon or something. No, it wouldn't be Nickelodeon. But there was a show on TV many years ago, a black and white show back in the 60s, I think. Maybe in the 50s, or maybe the 60s, all in the family with Archie and Edith Bunker. That was the main two characters and protagonists in the show. It was one of the first sitcoms, I think. But the show was very much um, old school in terms of the, what it, what it set, shared, what it presented, and what it um, exhibited. And that generation, and I parallel this with my parents in some ways was the was Archie was the breadwinner he went out to work came back and Edith was the stay at home house stay at home housewife who was taking care of everything else she was the little lady and he was the go-getter the breadwinner and um, all that sort of stuff and in that relationship I talked about it before another context about how codependent it was because it was very codependent at the time they couldn't live without each other but also how the culture was set up where the women were kept so to speak they weren't standing on two feet, they weren't breadwinners, they were basically taken from the um, family, family they grew up in into marriage, into a new domestic life. That was the culture back then. And, and the thing is, this is only, what, 60 years ago. That is where society was, and in some ways still is energetically. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the evolution of women has shifted dramatically over the last, well, especially since the 60s with the sexual revolution. I've talk, and I'm, I'm putting things together from things I've talked about before, but there's something else brewing, so I'm going to put it all on the table and see if something else grows out of that. <laughs> so bear with me. So, in the 60s, the sexual revolution, um, women's liberation, uh, the feminist movement, all these different labels happened. And in the, I think it was late 60s, this was going on, where women were burning their bras and were basically standing for standing their own independence. Now, this is way after the subject movement. So, regardless of voting, this is women claiming their right to be comparable to men. And in fact, what was happening back in the 60s, women were at that time, I think, 
and I don't, I can't speak to the mindset, but women were definitely coming out of the shadow of men in large, far, large part from what had happened for the previous generations. And so a lot of women were copying what was being taught, which was basically to take back their right to live, to earn, to be independent, to do what they want to do. And fast forward another 10, 20 years, 70s and 80s, women at that point were now fully immersed in the business world in different forms, at least earning their own, earning their own wage, having their own bank accounts, living in their own apartments, having their own cars, and not needing men. Because up to that point, women were dependent upon men to get out of the house to a large degree. And again, this is generalities I'm speaking about because there are individual unique stories amongst that. But generality speak, generally speaking, as a generality, you got that, there's a definite um, trajectory we've been on for quite a while. So women have now in the 70s and 80s gained their independence of not needing men because they didn't need a man to get them out of the house. They could do it themselves. And so relationships became very interesting back then because in that cultural shift, and it wasn't actually societal change at the time, is what was happening anyway, is that women didn't need men, which meant the dating arena changed. Men didn't court women out of the house, you know, courtship, that old fashioned term. They were basically being met head on by the women. And in a lot of cases in the 70s and 80s, women were taking the bull by the horn, so to speak. And women would ask men out, um, what happened to me, so I'm not saying it was everybody, but it was happening back then. And there was a definite shift in the, in a sense, the balance of power, so to speak, about dating. It still, at the same time, had this undercurrent where men were supposed to lead, men were supposed to be in charge, men were supposed, all these supposed to do things, but women didn't fit in that paradigm anymore. And yes, there's a lot of things that are changing with the culture, with the dating apps and everything else as you move forward another 10, 20 years. It's, and what I'm, and what I'm aware of, I guess, is I want to say this, because I'm just looking back at this now. As much as things are shifting in the dating arena, dating scene, it's still clear as society as a whole is that everything is um, old fashioned by comparison. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because there's all these new things are happening where women are now becoming like um, leaders in different fields. This is the thing that's bugging me about this. I'm not bugging me, it's things I'm aware of, is that there's a distinct surprise when it happens. When women suddenly become the leaders of this, whether it's, whether it's like having women coming into Congress in, in the November elections, by um, midterms, that is part of the conversation because this whole point about how surprising it is and how amazing it is that women are now being in, in, into the Senate, into the House rather, was so amazing. It's not normal yet. And that's where we have discrepancy going on. Uh, not to say we should, dis we should, we should um, um, downplay this, but I'm saying is the fact that we haven't got to that point yet. We're still in the early stages. So we are in a place now where the culture is now evolving to the point where women are now stepping into their leadership and everyone's like, wow, this is so cool. It's not normal. See, so cool is great, but when you're saying so cool, it's kind of like the first time a child starts to stand up. When you have a baby and first stand up, it's like, so cool. But when they're 10 years old, you don't think about it. They've been doing it for ages. Well, see, we aren't in that place yet in the culture, in our society, where women are in these places of leadership and stepping forward as a normal thing. And that's where we have a problem, I believe. We're not, maybe we haven't caught up to that yet. Maybe we're in a place now where we have yet to catch up with that reality. So in one part of the conversation, we have society that is still catching up to the modern day where women are treated as equals and it's just normal because it isn't normal yet. And we're still so far away from it in so many ways. And then the other side, there's the relationship challenge where men and women are not on equal footing when it comes to dating and relating and in, in intimacy. This is a missing piece of the conversation. And yes, there are dating apps, as I sidebarred earlier, that are out there now for women as well as men apps like Bumble, I think there's another couple of apps out there that are women-centric. In fact, that was one of the reasons what, why eHarmony was so different from um, Match back in the beginning, because they made it so that men couldn't just go scan some pictures and choose in or choose out. It was written, so it was designed so that people had to meet by personality before they could meet in by visual appearance. That was a shift because men are generally visually stimulated, put it that way, whereas women are more content stimulated. It's changing culturally again, and there's another part of the, the shift of the culture. 
is because of what's been happening with things like um, which which is it J Crew? I know it's one of the one of the mega catalog brands where where the there were these black and white photographs of guys with like like six pack abs and and musculature that's so toned and beautiful that women were swooning over. Where we've had the shift that's been happening, where women are drooling over men's bodies, that's a shift. It wasn't that way for a while. In fact, it was it hasn't been, it wasn't that way until about maybe twenty five years ago. It's, again, this is recent. It's always been men drooling over women's bodies. That's the whole structure. What was the porn industry? This. Um, shift is part of the change that's happening where we, yet, we haven't yet come into balance or into equality or into mutual respect between genders that's something and, and I'm speaking just for straight conversation at this point because there's a whole another level of that when it comes to the gay community and transgender because that's so new that's not even shown up on the radar yet but at this point we're still work, we're still not even a place where men and women are on equal footing when it comes to respect, understanding, and appreciation and acceptance. It's still lopsided. And that is, for me, one of the um, challenges I think we still face. And maybe it's just a timing thing. Maybe there's a matter of we haven't evolved to that point yet that it's coming. Because again, I'm talking about a span of 60 years since this began. I mean, basically 19, the 1960s. So we're almost at 60 years of when the sexual revolution first started and women began to start standing on two feet. You know, I would say I would say, would say it's parallel to the the um, black the black versus white the African American culture evolution as well. Um, just a sidebar, completely differently because it's on my mind as well. Um, watch it. I watched two movies early this week, so just a quick plug for them. One is um, Black Klansman, which I saw on Mon Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I saw, I think it was Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, I saw a movie called Skin, which is a short movie. It's in the Oscar nomination for um, live action short. Both very challenging and, and awakening movies, which I highly recommend both of them. If you, have, if you have seen Black Klansman, great. But if you go see Skin, it's a short movie. It's only 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever the requirement is. It will disturb you, and as it should. But the thing about it is Black Klansman was set in the... 60s, 70s. I'm trying to remember the cars that were in it. I would say that I would think it's the late, early 70s. Um, whereas Skin is set in current time. The thing about that, and just, just as it's a sidebar for a reason, is that the cultural evolution of African American population in this culture hasn't moved that far forward yet, based on in every part of the country, based on what's still happening. This is a very strange parallel, so bear with me as I'm saying this. I think that in a lot of ways, we think for some cases, women have moved, moved forward. It's become equal to men. And this is independent of color, by the way. But I'm aware that there's this... Um, presumption that everything's okay when it's not. That we have this evolution that's happened where women are stepping up and being seen as equals in so many different ways. But underneath that, like in, you get down to instinctual levels... Hi, Della, nice to see you my broadcast. I'm almost done, I think. I've been, I've been putting a lot of stuff into this talk so far. Um, that, yes, we have this conscious awareness that, that women and men are stepping up to a moral place of equality, but instinctually and viscerally, that hasn't happened yet. And that's, that, to me, is the cultural shift that has to happen, where when we have that instinctual shift where we are in a new place completely and differently, where we see each other as equals, that's when we've got to the right... We've, that's when we arrive at the destination. There may, there's going to be more stuff after that. As I mentioned, as I said, the LGBTQ, T, LGB, LGBTQ community hasn't even got started on this conversation yet. That equality thing is still missing. But I'm just talking about men and women in romantic and in a societal comparison and relationship that we have so much yet to do. This is obviously, from what I can see now, not a solution talk. This is a reminder of where we are and what we're about. And perhaps a... Um, and nudging the direction I think we should head. Sort of. This, I mean, this is what I've been talking about in certain circumspect, circumspect and circumstances for the last two and a half years. And this is very much about the shift that is needed for our culture, for our society, and for the world, ultimately. The growth of our population to be thriving and for this, this planet and country to survive and thrive there must be equality and respect between men and women. That has to be part. That's part of the. That's what required. In fact, I would suggest that 
without that we're doomed so there <laughs> so so this is what I, I once it gets out and I realize it's not a complete topic I mean let's be clear to distill down into what 15 minutes um, a history lesson of 60 years and the nuances and the evolution not going to be not likely but I want to at least put some ideas out on the table and to put some um, thoughts in the back of your mind to be awake to be aware to consider for yourself so if you're a woman watching this I stand with you and I trust other men do too but also know that other women may not yet get the memo that together women are stronger together so staying together as sisterhood and being support is a good thing men if you're watching this notice for yourself where inside of you there's a disparity or a, a sense of imbalance between men and women where maybe you treat women less than yourself or other men where you put different um, authority or power or control in the hands of one gender versus the other gender these are questions to do some self-investigation and I want to make sure you, it was out there because it's been something that's been in my mind for a while um, I think I'm going to leave it like that that seems to pretty much nail the point home I think I wanted to make there may be more coming up I'm not sure if this now I've got this out and it's sort of in the in the world <laughs> out of my head um, I'm going to sit with that and see if there's more coming up for tomorrow we'll see I, and by the way if you haven't seen my broadcast before I do these every day 7 days a week 5pm pacific time so there may be more of this tomorrow we'll see but no, no guarantees um, one quick thing just as a quick plug um, for those of you who haven't been tracking Valentine's Day is just uh, just under a week away it's actually next Thursday if I remember correctly uh, what's today 8th so yes next Thursday because it's Valentine's Day and if you're feeling like you've got some issues around the love and romantic relationship stuff going on I have put to I, I am offering a um, single session special deal Valentine's coaching thing if you're interested in just getting a quick conversation a one hour conversation with me by phone uh, message me over social media or go to my website and click on the contact button and just let me know you're interested and I'll say the, I'll tell you what it's about it's it's massively discounted which sounds so fancy I, pro I, I did make a new year's resolution which I've broken is that I wouldn't be discounting my prices anymore it's Valentine's Day I've got to do something because there's so many people with concerns upset heartbreak and nervousness and loneliness with when my Valentine's Day being less than a week away so that's not on my webpage it's simply just send me a message um, reach out to me or even put comments below and I'll contact you offline so with that um, and if you want help in a relationship just go to my I'll put the link in there for the, for the discovery session as well just in case you want to have a chat about relationships this is a bigger conversation than I can put in right here but it's a start so I do invite your input your thoughts your conversation your, your questions and your comments below in this broadcast whether you're doing it on Facebook or on YouTube either one works fine and and what do you think about this this is something that I'm noticing that I'm, I'm noticing the evolution is more and there's definitely an, a growth and shift culturally but also as we evolve uh, here's another piece not done yet here's another piece which is the evolution of the feminine and masculine energetic within men and women because and these are general again if you've seen the broadcast before you know about this is that masculine generally happens more predominantly in men feminine more predominantly in women as a primarily energetic we carry both inside but men who generally lean towards the masculine women generally lean towards the feminine as a predominant energetic we do do both depending on what we need to do that's a very short way of describing the whole thing um, but that polarity and that that nuance hasn't been as effect has been effectively expressed as it's doing more and more now we're growing into that place as well part of the shift I believe we're doing is to have more authentic alignment to ourselves so men more aligned to the masculine values as being masculine men some women are, some men are more feminine and women are more aligned to the feminine aspect the feminine truth the feminine power and again some women are more masculine naturally but the majority of the population are aligned as I said that's the work I've been doing for the last 2007 so what's that 12 years now it's definitely in my DNA now and uh, continues to change me and evolve me I hope you're doing the same thing so with that I thank you for watching um, replays for this this is my Facebook live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time if you're not watching it live and you want to catch it live find me on Facebook which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby make sure you're following me 
and there should be a video replay on the page and you can click on this and I'll be notified when I go live again. The replay on Facebook is, us is easily, uh, easiest to find on my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. Please like that page and you can watch the broadcast there. Secondly, I have a YouTube channel, which you may be watching this on now, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, where you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and then on there you can find my playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where you can watch all these broadcasts in YouTube format. And finally, I have a podcast which I'm slowly growing called Messages for the Masculine on iTunes. You can subscribe to that and also download the audio versions of my talks and listen to them whenever you're out on the road doing things and having a life. Um, I will be back again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And I hope this has provoked some thoughts for you because this is a big topic that I know is just opening just a crack so we'll see where it goes. But I hope it's been of insight to you, maybe provo provoked you to think more deeply about your own inner polarity, your own relationship to the world, your own relationship to the opposite gender, and your own relationship to your relationships. That's your homework. <laughs> I appreciate you being with me as always. Thank you for watching. If you know anybody should watch this and you know a group should share this, watch this, please share it with them. I appreciate that um, opportunity. And if you and again, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me. And also, if you're looking for some support, I do offer a single session deal for Thanksgiving for Valentine's Day. So reach out to me, message me, and I'll so you had to get in touch with me on that. With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.